G'day, my name's Chris, and on today's special episode, I'd like to talk about ACT's internal combustion engine ban from 2035. What does it mean? Who's it going to affect? And will this actually impact Australia's emissions? Will it reduce the price of electric vehicles? Will we have more choice? That and more. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. I cover electric vehicles and technologies from an Australian perspective. Last week, the ACT government announced that it will ban the sale of internal combustion engine cars. That basically means petrol or diesel cars in the ACT. You can still buy secondhand ones, but if you want a brand new whatever car you like, you're gonna to have to actually go across the border. First little issue, we'll talk about later. This is kind of great and awesome, but also gets a bit problematic. It's, it's great that they're sending a clear direction to market that by what, 2030, they want to have at least 80 to 90% of all new light vehicle sales in the ACT to be electric. And the big one of phasing out light internal combustion engine vehicles from 2035 is brilliant because therefore they're going to actually stop pollution at the tailpipe for a significant portion of vehicles because right now in australia about two percent going towards three percent hopefully by the end of this year will be electric so we start to flip that over that ratio that can only mean an improvement on the more than 20% of our CO2 emissions that occur right now in Australia come from vehicles. And if we switch that over, there's gonna be a massive reduction in greenhouse gases. On that journey towards 2035, they're going to prohibit onboarding of new internal combustion engine vehicles for rideshare and taxi networks, again, by 2030. Under the umbrella of making them more affordable, since last year they already provided two years of free registration for battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell cars. And they'll actually investigate uh, potential uh, future reforms. What that might mean? I hope, I really do hope, petrol standards in the state of the ACT. Well, uh, territory, it's a territory, but you get the idea. They already offer as well $15,000 interest free loans for uh, Zalevs and uh, also if you want to get yourself some charging equipment and to have it installed you can also use that uh, interest free loan to do that too. A huge saving, one that actually wipes thousands off the ticket price of any new car is that they have no stamp duty on new zero emission vehicles which this year will be expanded to include used electric hydrogen and electric vehicles. The ACT government also wants to introduce incentives to encourage the uptake of electric bikes, motorbikes and trikes. This is important to decarbonize our environment and get people out walking, cycling, doing anything but using their car. Because after all, these are significant energy requirements to have a car in the first place. All the demands on the road, infrastructure, all important things if we could actually get people onto lighter forms of transport. Think PT. This next year, they will open more than 70 publicly accessible electric vehicle charging stations across Canberra, and they'll expand that to 180 by 2025. Given that the ACT is like 2,358 square kilometers or roughly double the size of Geelong, that means those 180 charges equates to one for every 13 square kilometers. That's impressive and absolutely very necessary in our very near future. By 2023, they will enact regulation requiring electric vehicle charging infrastructure for new multi-unit residential and commercial buildings. The report cites that 70% of electric vehicle charging occurs in homes with the other 30% in apartments or units, and they, they're unable to access a plug. So to combat this, they'll introduce $2,000 incentives for the installation of EV charging in multi-unit buildings by 2023. There's also a section here about education and also importantly, leadership. And that's the, where they're gonna to continue to advocate for like strong national policy to support uh, zero emission vehicles and transitioning them, uh, like everyone, to this new standard. And obviously where possible, ensure that 100% of all newly leased government passenger vehicles are zero emissions if they're fit for purpose. The writing, is on the wall for internal combustion engine vehicles. 
For more than a century, they've helped us build economies, provided freedoms and opportunities that electric cars will continue into the next century. It's through these steps that the ACT has undertaken to date and the next careful steps that will help shape our future transport options. Could they do more? Yeah, absolutely. Some of these policy points have been done and proven to work in countries like Norway, where now they're at more than 90% of new car sales. That is to say, 90% of new car sales are electric. How did they get there? Well, it started more than three decades ago. In the late 1980s into the early 1990s, they did a whole suite of things. For instance, they have not imposed purchase or import taxes on EVs. There's been no annual road tax. They're still exempt from 25% VAT on purchases, free parking, no charges on toll roads. For almost eight years, EV owners got free rides on ferries. That's now been reduced to 50% of the fee, but nonetheless, it's important in a country that is filled with fjords and lots of ferry crossings to get you from one place to another. For a while there, they had no charge on toll roads, and since 2019, that's been reduced to 50%. But still, 50% is still pretty good, doesn't it? You're driving your petrol car and you're driving next to an electric one, you think to yourself, mate, this is costing me twice what that guy's paying over there. Hmm, actually really helps, doesn't it? They've also had since 2005 access to bus lanes, and these some of these rules are actually rolling back, but nonetheless, they're rolling back after three decades. What the ACT is doing here is a great start. And uh, as I said, it mimics what Norway has done. And uh, I think there's opportunity here for not only the ACT territory and also the Northern Territory and all the states of Australia to get on board and legislate in this way. But what I'd really like to see is federally that it's, this is supported as well. And so that we have a blanket Australia-wide ban as a whole country, like we've recently seen in the EU, where 27 countries have agreed to an internal combustion engine ban over there by 2035. Sure, there's gonna be ways around this. People who live in that little tiny place called the ACT could just jump over um, the border, and it's, and it's not a hard border, you just drive and you're suddenly, well, in New South Wales. It's all around it. You could go to a dealership across the border and get yourself a car there, bring it back home and pay a small fee to transfer the registration. So this is why we need to actually have a national approach. And I applaud the ACT for doing this and I'd like to see Victoria do it next. In fact, every place to do it next. <laughs> but nonetheless, let's kick it off with emission standards, fuel standards, an internal combustion engine ban, education, incentives, support to get people into electric cars, things that enable people who live in units and apartments to be able to charge their cars. You name it, there's a lot we can do here. And uh, the sooner we get there, the better we'll all be for our health, our wealth, and the future of Australia. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. Support me over here on Patreon if you want to, but otherwise, please be good, be great.